Shevsky here. Welcome to Fantasy House. Every week we have a different special guest come and give us a wild imaginary tour of their fantasy house. It's, uh, it's just a blast. It's the world's only NSFW real estate podcast. And it's just, it's, it warms my heart to uh, feel like a kid again and just get imaginative. You know, we take that MTV crib style tour and we kind of inject a little bit of like uh, Rick and Morty uh, adventure time, cartoony technology, weird trippiness into it. It's just, I feel like it just, it just adds a little bit of life to, to us as, as adults or somewhat adults uh, riffing and getting, getting creative. So thanks for coming on that journey with us, listeners. Every episode is brought to you by me, John Shesky, your local Southern California realtor. Market's changing all the time. California market is super strong, even with unemployment and uncertainty. If you want to know more about the market and anything to do with investments like multifamily uh, apartment buildings and all that good stuff, I absolutely love talking about that stuff. It's free. So just hit me up on my Instagram, J-O-N-S-H-E-F-S-K-Y. Why not? Or you can just email us at the podcast, fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com. I would love to chat with you. This episode is, uh, is, is a good one because they're all good ones because we put our heart and soul into making good episodes. Uh, my buddy, hilarious comedian from America's Got Talent, Ryan Nemo is here and uh, super, super excited to riff with this mofo. He's a killer. He's a killer on the road. Dun, 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 dun. His brain is squirming like a toad. That's The Doors. I don't know if you guys remember that band. All right. In the words of the great Angelo Bowers, let us do this. What would you think of How are you, dude? Good, man. Been a bit. I feel like I've talked to you because I've been watching like you uh, take off and have major success. And so I've been like keeping up. So I have that celebrity thing now where you feel like you talk to someone. But <laughs> right. like, I haven't actually talked to you in forever. I've just been hearing you talk to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's been a bit. Yeah. And that, that's especially a weird thing with AGT, especially. Uh, like, obviously, we were friends beforehand. So we know each other. But like AGT is weird because the way they frame it, like you, they, they people think they get to know you really personally as a human. Yeah. So like it weirds my girlfriend out. Like when we were allowed to go outside, we'd be like at places like having dinner, and people would walk up to us and be like, "Ryan, how are you, buddy?" And then like after they'd leave and get a picture or whatever, my girlfriend would be like, "Did you know them?" And I'm like, "No, never met them in my life. I have no idea who that is." People just think they know you, so they oh, yeah, up, they sit down at your table and like chat. It's weird. It's one of those weird psychological things that you can't take out of with media, dude. You just can't, you can never get rid of that, dude. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's right? definitely where, and especially now that I have some sort of like notoriety, you do. now there's yeah. like, there's like new things to like weed through now. Like there's different expectations of me than there was, you know, two years ago. And like now I'm thinking, I gotta, you gotta figure that out. It's always like, what's the next step and the next step. What's been the, like the biggest surprise to you about like being successful now? Like going from being a relatively unknown to like, oh, you can tour around and people will come to see you and your act. Yeah. Like, what's I, I, the that, biggest surprise about that? That in of itself is still weird because like, like so much of my career was built loosely on spite. It was, it was you know, a, like those people telling me like, you know, talking about your arms will never get you there, kid. Like, like all that kind of stuff. It's so and, crazy. And, and anyone ever told you that, Ryan? Because, dude, when we started together and you were hilarious from day one and, and no one ever looked at each other and said like, but he's talking about his arms. Everyone was always like, dude, that guy just fucking destroyed. Yeah, and, and that's what it should be. And that's the way I've always looked at it, you know? Like, if, if I'm not for you, that's fine. Like, if you don't want to hear me talk about what I'm talking about, everyone has that right. But like, People w- clearly wanted to hear about it. Like, it was a thing that, like, clearly it resonated. Like, a, a fourth of this country has a disability. If I went up there and just ignored it, what a slap in the fucking face <laughs> that is to, like, everybody. Um, the other weird thing, too, is just how quickly uh, people's perception of you changes. So many comedy clubs that I had tried to get in to showcase just so I can maybe do feature work that ignored me for years who are suddenly like, Hey, do you want to come headline? When do you have time available? Like, like your 
and, and again, it's just like any business. If you have something yeah. you can offer them, they're going to be nicer to you. Totally. But but just the amount of people who are now, and again, perfectly friendly. I, I get the business side of it. But people who didn't give me the damn time of day who are now like, yeah, we always believed in you, Ryan. We always yeah. were glad to see one of you, you know, make it. And you're just like, okay, just oh, yeah, dude. find the check. It's N-I-E-M-I. Uh, I, 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 okay, so I heard Bill Burr talk about that. He's like, do you think like that? He was talking about the same thing. It's like all these places that didn't give him the time of day until he was famous. He's like, do I, he's like, life's, I, he, I'm paraphrasing because that's the only thing I know how to do. Sure. Uh, I'm a par- parrot phraser. That's all I know <laughs> how to do because um, I'm not good at remembering like actual numbers and quotes and whatnot like that. So he said something along the lines like life being too short to like even be bitter about it. Like now that you're successful, you're spending all your time being thrilled and grateful that you were successful. Yeah. Are you really going to, do you have time in your heart to be like, I'm vengeful and I'm going to make them pay? You're just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Water on the bridge, write me my check. I'm going to go do what I love doing. What I knew I was always meant to be doing, which is being the headliner that they didn't know. They're the weaklings that, that didn't have faith in you or they couldn't afford to. Business is tough, you know, like whatever. They couldn't afford to. And, and, and some of it too is just timing. Like, I'm glad it took me as long as, and how, like knowing what I know now. Yeah. I tried to get on AGT for five years and I was getting frustrated with it for a while. I was like, like, but if I would have got it five years ago, I wasn't ready. Yeah. Like, I, like, like, I don't know uh, Drew Lynch that well. Yeah. But like, I had heard this about him because he, when he had his run on AGT, he was pretty young into comedy. He was maybe three years in, something like that. Yeah. And his headlining sets were rough for a while. Oh, like sure. he, he's a he's a killer now. Like he he put in the work. He's great. Yeah, he but at the time, he was expected to do forty five, and he maybe had twenty. Maybe and like and like yeah. and like that can be tough to be thrust into that. So like having that time where you kind of put in the work and you have that frustration, and you know me doing all these like dive bar gigs across the Midwest and the South and in front of real people, like you said. Now that like I am like okay, now you can headline. I was ready to go right away because I'd been headlining, you know, dive bars in Iowa for years, you know, like, and that's so rad because that, that is like a quality that it's like, you, you cannot replace that. Even if someone's new and they have 45 minutes, it's like, Oh, you really, you can't even rotate out some stuff. And and, and like, you know, like what if, what if your opener from the city that you never met before just did your first 10 minutes for their bit, are you going to do that now? Like you need, you need to have some chops to really deserve charging a ticket price yeah, for people and have them exactly. say exactly you know word of mouth tell their friends like you got to see ryan in person he's freaking killer it's not just <laughs> on tv i had steven briggs on right and okay i love steven oh steve he's amazing hilarious dude sweetheart like just that those are my kind of people right um but he was he did the, this show and he's probably done a couple now at a uh, drive-in theater and i know jesus trio did one too where people pulled their cars up it looked like if you're watching the movie cars and they went to a comedy club right. this is what it would be it was absolutely amazing and he loved it. Do you think that's the future of comedy right now for the next five years or something like that? Um, what do you think? No. Okay. Uh, and, and the reason I think, like, it's the same reason that I think, like, Zoom shows are doing really really well right now. Okay. It's because that's what's available. Yeah. Uh, like, like, it would be cool if this was a new market, you know, because, like, I've done a couple of things with, like, Nowhere Comedy Club that, like, Ben Glebe and Steve Hofstetter and Chris Bowers are doing. Yeah. And the shows are amazing, and they're doing a great job, and they're getting extra money into comics' pockets. Like, it's fantastic. But, like, I'm a little curious of, like, like are those successful because the shows are awesome? Or are they successful because people can't go to real shows very often right now? Yeah. But, like, like, are people going to choose that over going to the Laugh Factory? going to the improv when they can or yeah. is it just like they're excited about it because shit that's what we have i mean i i think it's a combo of both i think it's novel and i think it's exciting to be able to go out i haven't been able to go to one yet um but i i steve's like i'll get you a spot on one i was like i i i'm not leaving the house yet but uh yeah <laughs> but dude like uh it looks super rad and i i'm mean, like if they if they let's say they get a vaccine going in the next couple months and then in the next year, 2021, probably 2021 will still be interesting with social distancing and masks and stuff like that yeah. uh, through, through the whole year, probably. And, and people just being gun shy about leaving. Like, uh, even yeah. when it's safe, are people going to believe it's safe yet? You I, know, like, I, are they going to go out? I like, the reason, I, I've done a few. Uh, this weekend, actually, I get my second actual comedy club work in person Yeah, since this has happened. I'm going out to Portland. And, you know, like I wouldn't go there, social distancing, mass required, all that good stuff. Yeah. I don't feel great about it. Like I, I feel safe. Like I feel I'm going to be taken care of, 
but like I'm going because no one else is paying my bills. Like we, we have to make some kind of money. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. Cause like some people, like when I post that, like, Hey, come see me in Portland this weekend. Some people are like, hell yeah, I'm going to be there. And some people are like, I would not go to any comedy club under any circumstances right now, but I love you. So it's like, there's like this mentality of like, people are going to come along with it at different times, mm-hmm. depending on their own, you know, mental state, whatever people might have underlying health problems. They would love to go out, but like for them, it's too risky. So I don't have that. So for me, I can kind of judge and be like, all right, I, I'm being selective. Some places I had to cancel some stuff in Florida because I just don't feel good about Florida right now. <laughs> I don't know if anybody does. Yeah. I want to do the shows, <laughs> but the problem is Florida is what it is because oh, they're, they have such a, like a fuck it. We're doing it. <laughs> Open everything. And I'm like, well, no, but Portland's been cool about it. I did uh, Illinois a couple weeks ago. That went fine. Uh, I'm getting tested after each each trip that I make like that, just to be sure. Yeah. Because uh, I don't want to put myself or anyone – I don't want to put my fans at risk. That's the responsible you know, like, thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not a monster <laughs> or anything, sure. but, like, I would love to sit home and, and just collect money, but, like, no one's paying artists, really, to not be out there doing it. So we're kind of, like, rocking a hard place. Like, what do you do? Yeah, I, I mean, that's such a challenging thing. I was talking to Sandy Danto, and he's like, do you think our art will ever come back? And I was like, I'm sure it will. It's just, you know, at what pace? And, yeah. you know, like, I was listening to Al Titcher report, and it's just, I felt like it was such an important statement. He had a guest on who was just saying, like, guys, like, the pandemic will end. People are super absorbed in this, and they think it's going to last forever. It's like, it's a problem. It will be here with us for a bit, and we're going to have to deal with it. But at some point, whether it's two months, six months, couple years like it will end and will things all go back to normal no things are going to change like they always do but it will end this regular stand-up will be back i uh, you know and i think artists are going to be fine at some point we were already starving and struggling and whatever <laughs> right yeah like if there's any group of people that knows how to survive when they're not making like i i had like the last year is the first year i've ever really made actual money in my art. Like, like yeah. I know how to live off some Good for you. Mac and some ramen noodles. And <laughs> I remember um, uh, Mo Mandel had a, had a bit well, during the 2008 crash and it was about like the economy crashing. And he's like, I, I again, parrot phrasing, uh, he totally didn't. He's like, he's like, what, what, what does that mean to us in, in Hollywood? Like it, you don't notice a difference. You're like, Oh, I was broke before that and struggling to pay my rent and put food on the table and had no future financially. And now you're telling me I'm going to be broke and struggling to pay my rent and have no future financially. It doesn't make a difference. Like if you're already broke. Yeah. Yeah. As long as the water's still running and the electricity still goes on, you're safe. Then there you go. Yeah. That's all you need. Luckily I have enough people that love me that they won't let me be homeless. So thank God. (laughs) I'm cool. Social safety net. Um, I, I love, this is not a video podcast, but I can just describe to our listeners. Uh, Ryan has the Jurassic Park parody logo for himself. Uh, yes. So imagine the Jurassic Park logo, but instead of it being uh, the T-Rex skeleton, it is his arm and it says <laughs> cripple threat underneath it. Genius. Oh. Yeah, it, it, that, that is the best $75 I ever spent. Genius. It, it was about six years ago. Um, one of my uh, buddy's girlfriend, like his, her younger sister, had just gotten out of college um, with a graphic design like degree. And she was just looking for stuff for her portfolio. So I was like, hey, I had this idea. If you want to give it a shot, like I'll, I'll throw you a few bucks and we'll see. And then like she just nailed it right out of the park and oh, like dude. could not have been better. And then a fan actually made that sign. So it's like a big ceramic, like oh, yeah. you know, he, he like fired it up in a kiln and like, did oh, it, like yeah. it's legit. Like that's a weird thing about like the kind of success I've had recently. Fans just bring you presents now. Oh, yeah. Like, I would have oh. loved this six years ago when I couldn't afford it. Like, it <laughs> gives like me celebrities getting the swag bags with, like, two iPhones in it. He's like, do you think just Seth Rogen needs two iPhones right now? Like, yeah, like he gets them. Like, like, man, I needed you to pay for my dinner six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Get, get these fans a time machine, huh? <laughs> Oh, dude. Uh, um, well, uh, let's uh, let's imagine that we got the orange drone flying around right now over your fantasy house. What are we looking down at? What's uh, what are we seeing? Okay, so um, so I I don't know how to translate this. I'll tell you. I'll start first. I'll tell you what. If I didn't end up falling in love with the girl I moved out here for right now, yeah, this was my plan because I kind of convinced myself in my head. You know, I'm get, I'm getting towards towards forty. 
I'm like, I'm just going to be single and just have fun and do this. Here was actually my idea initially. So I was going to buy or build a tiny house. Mm -hmm. Not not like tiny house in like that phrasing, but just a small, modest, you know, just normal, maybe two bedroom house on some land and then build basically a giant pole barn and make that an arcade. Hell yeah. I, I, I am a huge game collector. That is what I do on the road. Um, when, when I'm traveling, um, I always look for like Ma and Pa, like, you know, video game stores. I, I, I'm a collector. I own 2,000 plus games right now. Yeah. That's what I'm always looking to do. So like my vision, because like I grew up so poor. So we grew up in a trailer. There were six of us in a tiny trailer. I, and I was just been a struggling comic up until last year. Yeah. So like, I know what it's like to live with a little space, <laughs> you know, <laughs> basically with a tiny space. Yeah. So I don't have like these grand visions in my head of like, I need to have this like huge den and this huge like bar. For me, I'm just like, I need a bed, a toilet, a fridge, <laughs> and then an arcade. So that was kind of the vision. So like <laughs> the dream hope now, and I tell my girlfriend this when we're talking, it's like, okay, as long as I have, you know, a giant space for an, a game room. That that's the starting point for me. I need to be able to look at the 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 house and see what the the setup is for the space to see like okay, can I put my collection in this room? As long as you can fit your collection, then you're like that passes the test. There you go. Exactly. Maybe all I need in life is a big old game room. <laughs> it's kind of what it is, man. I'm a giant kid, man. I I want to I want to be able to display the cool stuff that I'm getting and like yeah, dude. And, and cool. so it's like I I've, I've even like I'm like you can have the rest of the house. You can you can put doilies where you want, whatever thing you want to do. Please go nuts. It's all you, dude. I, I would love to meet your girlfriend. It's someone that you have to tell. Like you can put your doilies anywhere, honey. Yeah, she's okay. ninety five. <laughs> oh, dude. All right. So describe us. Take us. Take us on a tour. So we go. We're at your fantasy house now. Okay. So and then like I, I want some land. I okay. do want a little land. I, I know California. That's tricky. That's not the easiest thing in the world to find, but. You know, like where where I grew up in Indiana, it's a very rural town. It's called Demott, Indiana. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's a farming town. So, yeah. like, I had friends. Like, the cool houses to go to would be like my buddies, who they'd be on like you know twenty acres of land, and oh, they yeah. build their own you know like like paintball course. Oh they, yeah, like like, like uh, one of my best friends in high school, uh, his dad like uh, basically did like excavation work. So he had like these, so he built, he dug ponds and he dug like for septic he had, tanks. He had excavators and scoops yeah. that he could mess with stuff. Oh yeah. So, so they literally made a giant pond in the backyard with an island in the middle. And there was a zip line that went oh from like a, a tower. Like it was like the You've coolest. already been to a real fantasy house. Yeah. It's amazing. So like, I, I want some land. Like, I don't know if that's really my speed to do that. Okay. But, but I, I like having land to do stuff. That's always a bummer about LA. Sometimes you can see wonderful houses and they're right up on each other because yep. land is like just such, such a premium. Yep. You can't have these huge backyards to, you know, put a, you know, play wiffle ball or whatever yep. <laughs> things you want to do back there. They're out there, but you definitely have to move far out of the epicenter of Los Angeles. Yes. Because unless you have, I mean, it's it's a thousand dollars a square foot if you're in Beverly Hills, where they have some of those houses where you're like, this is four acres, but it's like, yeah, you're a twenty million dollar house. There's hundred million dollar houses. So, but they have them. But yeah, dude, I love it. So, so you're thinking about land? Are you thinking about like a desert land, forest land in the mountains? Um, um see, for me, I, I'm not. Uh, I, I sweat too much for the desert. Sweat too much <laughs> if for I can the- avoid it, I'm, I'm a sweaty boy. Okay. As you can tell now, I'm good. It looks like I'm just nervous to talk to you, but I'm actually just, you're just uh, hot. I'm just a sweaty boy. Um, and and uh, so for me, like, like, I mean, I'm from where it's flat. So that's kind of where my mentality looks at it. Okay. I, I, I would love just like a big, something where like, you know, you could set up like a horseshoe, you know, thing or set up, you know, cornhole, like, like things like oh, that. Yeah. To be able to do activities. And or shoe and cornhole, folks. Exactly. He's from Indiana. Yeah, which is the uh, the the name of my favorite sex move. <laughs> Horseshoe to cornhole. <laughs> Horseshoe to cornhole. Hold on, baby. One, two, three. Horseshoe to cornhole. <laughs> Spin it around. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> um. So okay. Uh, so you got a bunch of land. You got horseshoe. You got cornhole. It's flat. What's it like when we go inside the actual premises? I mean, in the house. Uh, I like open spaces. Okay. 
So that, that's, uh, I, uh, that, that is part of, like, if I'm going to have a house, because I've lived in such cramped apartments where you got to get everything in there, a little bit of room to breathe, a little okay. bit of room to, you know, if I decide I want to take up yoga, I might love yoga. So important. I might love yoga. I've never had the space to try it in any Dude, place that I've lived. Same so. here. LA was so crazy for me. As soon as we moved out and actually had like a living room space, like with a rug on the floor and we, and my wife and I both do yoga together on it. I'm just like, dude, I don't ever want to go back to having a living room where you can't do yoga. And none of my friends in LA have apartments where you can do yoga in the front. Like, it's just like you walk in, you go like this, you sit down. Eh, eh, eh. And it's like, dude, there's nothing better than just doing yoga. I mean, we, we sound like a bunch of hippies, a couple of hippies here, but doing yoga like right there in front of you or just laying down on the floor and playing with animals or your kids or whatever is like, yeah, like just having, so having a little space for that. Good yeah, for so, you. So, so, so I like the open space. I kind, kind of, um, and, and luckily I don't know how you find this. You probably have to build this, but the, the girlfriend's on board with this too. I would love to have like a secret passage. That, that, <laughs> yeah, you, do, you do have to build that. That, generally that, that, that is totally the kid in me. But like, I always remember how cool that was to think like, like in the game clue, yeah, you know, where it's like, oh, if you're going here and then it leads to over here. Oh yeah. Like I would love to have like a secret like staircase or like a secret room that people don't know is there that you got to go through that. Oh yeah, dude. I don't know what I would use the room for or what the practical use of the secret passage is, but just to have like a, like as a kid, that was so fascinating. Like how cool would my kids be? If like their friends would be like, can we go in the secret passage? Dude, it's there. So in, in downtown Laverne, there is a small, um, uh, well, it's not small. It's a, it's a three unit. Like they, they built this three unit, uh, condo complex, but they look like Victorian homes that were built in the 1800s. And okay. So years, I thought that it was like a, you know, late 1800 weird Victorian home that was like, must've been here during the cowboy era. And I found out, um, a couple years ago, like, the, oh, this is only built like five years ago. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it's like modern on the inside, but it's, it looks super just old school Victorian and weird. And I, one of them was for sale and I got to go through and check it out. And it had a bookshelf room. You literally, you think you're at the top floor. Cause you're do, like, do you like, do you pull the book? Does it like literally work it, that way? It or? doesn't, you don't get to pull the book, but that could be, someone could make that for you. But really you just, you see where this bookshelf is. And if you know the right one, you pull the shelf out of the way and that's the door and all of a sudden you're walking upstairs into like a whole like there was like a whole attic room with like refrigerator a television and like like a nice little setup with it with the whole with windows and from the very top floor but there's something really magical about just like little secret mystery stuff that's like oh and like a playful it makes you feel like a kid which is you know yeah whole point yeah, of which is exactly podcast. what i want i mean that's essentially what i am as an yeah. adult, you know, I mean, talking about my giant video game collection like that yeah. <laughs> because of the whimsy of it. And, and they're, just, they're just something neat about having like your own little private space. Yeah. Like, you know, and like, I mean, like I said, I grew up in a trailer and there were six of us in a single wide <laughs> no trailer. No privacy at all. You had no privacy for anything. I, di- I didn't even learn to masturbate until I was in college. <laughs> you, di- you didn't dare attempt that. <laughs> <laughs> with that many humans nearby Speak for yourself i would have just been like all right i guess we're going out we gotta, <laughs> gotta do what we gotta do you guys look that way for a minute yeah you're about to learn some things mom <laughs> here we go well probably with how hard it is to masturbate you probably probably bust really quick so you just be like look out of there look at there's a wolf and then uh, i'm done okay and then the fact you're like <laughs> I, I call it being efficient not busting too quick it's efficiency, efficiency i'm a busy right. man all right i was on television Chefsky, all okay. right. I got things to do. People rely on me. <laughs> too too busy to jack up for ten minutes here, folks. <laughs> oh, dude, busy. Yeah, yeah so, so definitely a secret passage or like a secret room, something okay. like that. I think would be very cool. Um, um, what would you we, have in the secret room? Did we talk about that? Because um, I it, a picture a for way, us. Like once once we get in there, it, 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 if there's a way that I could make the game room, what leads into the secret room, I think that would be cool. Like basically make it like a clubhouse. Okay. Like, yeah. I think that'd be cool. Um, I don't know how big you can make a secret room. I don't know if you want to have, like, an entire floor of your house be I mean, this secret. is fantasy. But this is, this make is it a fantasy, fantasy damn it. I mean, people, go, <laughs> people go really high-tech on this, so you could go as trippy and, and unrealistic as you want. Yeah, yeah. So then, that, yeah, I want a floor. <laughs> I want yeah. a floor that's basically that. Um, I, I've always wanted, um, uh, and, and you, it's sad you don't see them very often out here, but, like, I love a big, like, finished basement. Oh yeah, 
like like I that was that. always super cool. Like my uh, my aunt and uncle, like they kind of had theirs. Like that was kind of the template in my head. And kind of like looking at it now, it wasn't as big as I thought it was when I was like six. Yeah, you know, when everything's giant. Yeah, but like kind of like going into this like separate area, like you again, it's not quite a secret passage, but like it's separated from everything else. I love it. Is it is it something primal about us about going underground? Like I, I because I grew up with I had these friends in in Illinois. Um, that we would visit uh, in summers and they, they were fairly well off and they had an underground, like their basement was huge. And it was like, they had it designed, they had four kids. So they had it designed for the kids, which I, I was one of the kids at that age. And right. it could go play with their kids in this, like they had a little basketball court and like this little movie viewing thing. And like, there's something magical about going down the stairs underground. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's so strange. Like I know a lot of people in the Midwest do it. Uh, like it, like they set up like a bar down there, so yeah. it's like entertaining. It's like, yeah. like 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 the like the very kind of cliche definition of a man cave. A yeah. lot of times is what the basement becomes in the Midwest. And, and, and I'm not I'm not a drinker. I'm not like a that kind of guy. Yeah. But again, just kind of having an entertainment space because like just just something about like not seeing the sun makes it kind of have like almost like a like a, a club feel in a weird way. And like not not like a nightclub, but it's like. Hey, now we're, it's like a speakeasy. We're just like, hey, this is clearly where we're entertaining. This isn't yeah. where you work. This isn't where, it's a recreation space. That what happens in my finished basement stays <laughs> in my finished basement. Y'all understand? Okay. Yeah, and, and the other thing I would want too, um, anything with like basement or multiple floors, uh, I want an elevator. Yeah. I love an elevator. I, I had never actually seen one in a home. Uh, I'm going to name drop a little bit, but it was only because this was so cool. So, um Last uh, Thanksgiving, I, I had dinner at Chris Jericho's house for oh, Thanksgiving. Wow. Uh, wow. So I, ha- I happened to be we, – we've become buddies from AGT. It's like the weirdest thing. It's a whole other story. Oh, it's so awesome. But, but the fact that we're buddies now – and I was doing shows. I was working side splitters down in Tampa, and he lives down that way. Yeah. And him and his wife saw that I was down there, and he'd be like, hey, you got plans for Thanksgiving? And I was like, I'm probably just going to hang out. And he's like, no, you're coming over. Oh, and, that's um, awesome. The, the house that they bought, apparently, like, it used to be owned – um, by like the people who invented Gatorade, essentially. So I, I think oh, it was. Oh no! Like, Down uh, in Florida. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. To show how ridiculous it is, like I, I think they still live next door. So like the actual old dude and his wife that actually yeah. were part of that. Yeah. They still live there. This was the house that they just gave their son. So it was just like a legacy house, and there was an elevator in the house, and it's not a super fancy elevator. But just the novelty, and it's it's faster to take the stairs. It would have been there's way some, there's faster. There's something fancy boy about like pressing the button to be like, oh, I want to go yeah. up and I don't want to use my legs. Yeah, it, it was even one of the older ones too, where it had like the metal gate. You had oh, to like, yeah, pull over yourself first before you did it. Yeah. I was like, this is so cool. I don't know why this is as cool as it is. It's rad though. But it's so cool. So <laughs> I, it kind of I think goes in like the the mentality of sort of like the secret passage. Yeah, like it's just like such like a. Like, interesting ways to travel around your home. Like, a fire pole into the basement would be awesome. <laughs> you oh, know? yeah. Like, like the Ghostbusters house. Oh, dude, for sure. For yeah. sure. Just alternate ways to get around, I think, are fun. Especially for things like, like, you'd have to be safe with, like, toddlers or whatever. But, like, how cool would you be, like, as a nine-year-old if you had a fire pole in the house? <laughs> I think a fire pole would make you a cooler nine-year-old, and an elevator would probably turn you into a fascist dictator. <laughs> That's just me, though, folks, and what do I know about psychology? Uh, I'm just <laughs> throwing shit at the board, seeing what sticks. Is that, right? <laughs> Is that what I'm talking about? That seems, that seems to make sense, though. If you polled the amount of people, no, no, no pun intended, if you did a survey of the, the people that grew up with fire poles in their house versus elevators, I bet you'd find out that I was right. Just thinking about it, though. Uh, do, you have a, do you have a kitchen in this uh, fantasy house? Um, I do. Um, so I, I don't know how to cook. That's okay. I, I, don't, I don't have a skill set on that. So like a kitchen's never been a huge priority okay. for me. But, but again, space. Space okay. is always very important. I, I, like, having, I like an island. I, I like kind of having that big setup there. And then just, man, because because I'm so nerdy, like I don't even know how much I would use it. But just being able to have like a full like video game setup, like in the kitchen, 
in the kitchen. This is how much you don't cook. You're like, I'll be just playing video games. I was like, yeah, in exactly. the kitchen, how are you going to cook? Like, I don't cook. Like, like I want to open the oven, and it's actually a TV behind it. It's like that's a functioning hilarious. oven. It's that's just, <laughs> just what, game, what game would we be playing, then, if we were in your kitchen? You're giving us the tour right now as your host. I'm walking through it. I'm like, all right, Ryan's showing us the kitchen. What would you want to play right oh, now? It's got to be something old school. Like, I'd probably set it up with, like, an NES emulator. Like, oh, okay. Old school. Cause, cause, yeah. like, something like that's going to be a talking point. And, yeah. and most people, like, even if you don't like video games, everyone remar- remembers Super Mario Brothers and, like, things like that. So oh, something yeah. that people are going to be able to, like, oh, yeah, I remember that. That's cool. The, that the music like alone that. is, like, nostalgic. Like, I'm not really good at video games. I've ever beaten – I've probably beaten, like, one or two, like, modern warfares or whatever <laughs> over the years. Like, I – but like, if you play like Zelda or Mario Brothers or any of the flight simulators from that, that era, like I'm like, oh man, these are the tunes, baby! Yeah, like I just love absolutely. the music. Absolutely. So that's great. Um, how about a bathroom? I know you do um, that. Bathroom is uh, uh, is uh, again space. Always the first first thing I'm going to say. Uh, I love the idea. Uh, I, I'm I'm old, getting older, man. I have bad knees. I, I hate walking. I, I want one one of the, like the uh, like basically a room that is the shower. Oh yeah. You know, like it just has like the big floor drain in the middle. Yeah. And you maybe have like a vanity kind of over there so you can do other stuff too. Yeah. But like just basically just like when you pull like, Oh, and then you're in the shower. Oh like, yeah. Like I, I stub my toe and shit so many times, like getting into like a tub shower and think, cause those are always what's in apartments. It's almost always a tub shower. Oh yeah. Like getting into there. So I still having, love tub showers too. Like when I see a house, it's it's it's, go, it's going away nowadays. And you'll go to houses now uh, that have no tubs in them. They'll have all the rooms will have full standing showers. And I'm like, where do these people take baths? At? I have like an anxiety attack. Right. And I'm like, I have to warn my clients. You guys, um, just so you know, this house is great, but there's nowhere to take a bath. <laughs> Don't you guys have bad? I like backs and knees and hips. Like I need to sit in some Epsom salt. Oh, okay, yeah. so. A giant walk-in shower. Yeah, I, w- I want that for the shower, and then also like probably in the same room or kind of around there, having like kind of like a more of like a hot tub, like something kind of bigger. Okay, there's our than so that. Because okay. I have no desire, like if it comes to like cleaning myself, I have no desire to sit in a bath. Like you're just sitting in your own filth. Yeah, it's like, like, like I don't like the, like if I'm dirty, I don't want that to be how I'm cleaning myself. I'm not at like, all. Just so our listeners know, I'm not at all insinuating we should all be sitting in our own filth. Just so you guys know. I'm talking about like the dude. That, that is what I got out of it. As long as you some candles lit, read a book. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, you know, yeah, okay. As long as I've known you, you've been like, hey, you want to come sit in my filthy water? <laughs> that's true, huh? It, it was <laughs> very weird. Way years, folks, and uh, that is my opening line. <laughs> the fact about- that you got your wife that way is just shows that there's somebody for everybody. That's quite right. My, my filthy, filthy, marinated wife. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I love – I want to have, like, a big kind of, like, hot tub, jacuzzi. Okay, that's great. Um, I, I do like that. Um, big – just, like, a lot of counter space is big. It is. Um, like, like, right now, um, we have to use separate bathrooms in this place. It's a two-bathroom, and one's, like, a full, and one's, like, a smaller one. Yeah. There's just not enough room for the girlfriend and I to both be there. Having your own space for that kind of stuff so I can put my moisturizers and my creams – that's funny. I was just going to ask you, like, what do you need a bunch of counter space for in the bathroom, lady? Uh, <laughs> it's my wife that has the giant amount of stuff. I'm like, what are all these creams for? I, I never see you using them. I just see a bunch of creams everywhere. Um, is there anywhere else in the house that we need to see before we wrap this puppy up? What- um, I'm trying to think. Like, I, I want another kind of game room that's not video game room as well. What kind of games? Uh, like board games? or? Uh, well, games? well like, that would be cool, but I'm thinking like pool table, kind of like the oh, traditional yeah. kind of stuff like that. Yeah, totally. Uh, like, like, I'm all for, like, entertaining people. Um, it, it's always been something that, like, I'm not good at it because I've never had the opportunities to, like, host parties. I bet you'd be really good at it. Because I've always lived in such little shitholes that were perfect for me. Yeah. You, you can't have eight of your buddies over if you live in a studio. You know, like, yeah. you just can't But you that. can, but it feels very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it becomes <laughs> the weirdest gangbang of all time. It is just, and, and not by intention. It's like, I just had to put my penis somewhere. There was nowhere yeah, to yeah. put it. I mean, There's just... only so much crotch space. <laughs> that's right. And you invaded it. We can save a lot of space if the six of us kind of line up like a human centipede and then put 5% <laughs> of our bodies into the other body. And look how much space it saves. Exactly. That's how you negotiate it. <laughs> Ten dudes in a studio. Yeah. I, I I want to be able to. I, I just want like areas that I can like entertain at. Okay. So you know, like like um, a place that I I lived in my buddy's giant house for a while with him. He just had like an extra room, and I went down. He was in Florida, and he he had made one of his rooms just a big uh, like basically movie theater. 
kind of thing. So, like, so like having those kind of rooms, I know, I know that's a, you know, that's not unheard of to put a theater in your home, but no, like but- just having that available where it's like, Hey, we want to have a movie night. Boom. Want to play pool. Boom. Want to have a video game night. Boom. Like, what would That's we be watching point. for movie night? So what, 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 for Fantasy House movie night, what would we you'd be like, check out my theater. What, what's going to come on the screen? Uh, hardcore pornography. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. No one ever has that on their MLS listing pictures for the luxury homes. Whenever I look through it, I'm like, they have a theater. It's always like pictures of like Scarface or something like that. But hardcore pornography? Hardcore. Because for- basically uh, I, I want um, my future mother-in-law to be in our life but not come over very often. And that will drive her out. She'll be like, I love my son-in-law. I'm so excited <laughs> that they are doing so well. Their house is beautiful, but I don't feel comfortable watching The Green Door more than once. Yeah, I don't I understand the all of much. the pornography. It's yeah. just constant. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude. So, so Rad, I, I, just on a side note, I think you'd be an awesome host. I could just tell from you even talking about the uh, opening up the... Uh, oven in your kitchen and having a video game uh, screen in there with a console and saying that's a talking point it's like no this this is the voice of someone that would be an awesome host so yeah you got you got to host some stuff dude excellent Great. yeah yeah that's gonna be the plan hopefully uh possibly when you help me buy a house one day let's do it <laughs> where can people reach you where do you want people to find you what's the most- uh twitter facebook instagram it's at cripple threat eight that's the number eight uh, there were seven before me, but I've risen to power. Uh, I've, I've destroyed the other ones in my life. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hit me up there. Uh, websites cripplethreat.com. In theory, my tour schedule is up there. Um, time really has no meaning right now, so we Tell don't really it, right? know when I'm touring full time. But uh, in theory, any dates I'm doing are on there. Uh, if you. If you like me, you're a fan of what I do, you want to say hi, I'm very interactive on social media. The fact that anyone actually gives a shit about me now is so mind-blowing to me after spending 12 years of no, just dude. being in obscurity. So you deserve it, man. The, no, the it's fact so that, great. Like, so if you say hi, I'm probably going to say hi back because it's crazy that anyone cares. So please do. You guys hit him up, hit up Ryan, and uh, say what's up. Tell him Shevsky sent you. He loves me. Well, we feel like hashtag blessed guests getting to see your, your fantasy house and getting to go inside. And I hope that you guys enjoy Ryan. And when he is back on tour in person, go see him. Or if you're up in Portland and you got a strong immune system and a really good uh, mask, go yeah. check him out. Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind that I will no longer let you pay me to spit in your mouth. I can't do that anymore. But uh, but Dude. if that doesn't ruin the experience for you, come see me. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time listening, uh, go ahead and give us a five-star review. Or, you know, give us whatever review you want. If you want to give me a one-star because you think I deserve it, well, then, damn it, this is America. And that's your right. If this is someone that's been listening for a while, go ahead and hit the share button, baby. Send this episode to somebody that would love it. You've got someone in your life that loves video games, that would love Ryan's comedy. Hit the share button right now. All right, you guys, be silly and have fun.